Tom, your firm, and I don't, I, mean, I assume you worked on this project, but the University of Arkansas project, yes. if, if not the largest, one of the largest CLT uh, buildings in, in the nation. Mm -hmm. um, so you, you, you're well versed in, in this construction material. I wanted to get a, your sense as a firm of what you guys are, I mean, where are you, where are you looking to take the mass timber, mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, construction material yeah. and design approach here as you mm -hmm. work? On more of these projects, whether they're small scale or large scale. Yeah, so we've we've actually we've been very fortunate to have entered this mass timber world, working on pretty large, significant buildings. So our design building at UMass Amherst was our first mass timber building, and it you know it got a lot of recognition, given it was a very significant academic building. It had this very cool sculptural zipper truss that was the main that shaped the main space, and then on the heels of that, we worked on. Uh, although he Hall at the University of Arkansas, which was taking mass timber in a new typology where design building was a traditional classroom building, academic building, and although he Hall was now a student housing typology. So proving that mass timber is versatile, that it can be used for any type of buildings in terms of its program type, that I think was really important with Adohi Hall. And also proving like a real efficiency because Adoe Hall was a it was a really big uh, building with over seven hundred un uh, beds, mm -hmm. and so two hundred thousand square feet. It was at the point of completion the largest uh, cross laminated timber uh, structure in the United States. It might still be. <laughs> I, I think mm -hmm. uh, in the next six months or so, we prob probably a building in the Pacific Northwest will surpass it. But for now, it may still well be. Um, but beyond that, it was it was really just uh, again just making uh, proving the concept of a large housing structure that could take advantage of the uh, the modular uh, efficiency of mass timber. I, I think that was what was really uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, pioneering about that project. And then now, as we continue to work on more projects, we're really expanding across scales and types of buildings. So other projects that we've got on boards are. We're doing a museum for the National Museum of Forest Service History in Montana. And so that's kind of looking at a cultural of typology of a building, again, using mass timber. Uh, we're doing a tiny, tiny, tiny uh, environmental education center for a preschool in Auburn, Alabama, which is like barely uh, 3,000 square feet. And, and that's really looking at kind of like the, um, the, 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 Kind of a microscopic level, in, in, if you will, in terms of looking at a procuring all of the source of wood on the building site because it's being built in a nature preserve. So the trees that we will have to remove to make the building site are actually going to be the source of wood that's going to be made for the two buys and the cross laminated timber that will be produced uh, locally in near in Alabama uh, and brought back to the site so that. We're using uh, wood for essentially all of the structure. Uh, we're not. There's no fa concrete foundations. We have wood piles, uh, wood structure, cross laminated timber walls and roofs, and all of that is being done, kind of sourced from the site, uh, made into lumber and, and and CLT and brought back to the site. So that's really exciting. Kind of is proving this kind of uh, proof of concept of being able to build locally, right? Take the local mm -hmm. materials and, and to be very super sustainable in, in kind of reducing the carbon footprint and the embodied car, uh, carbon of a project. And then the, the third project that we're working on is more urban. And if this one probably has the most, um, I would say relevance in terms of the, diff, the kind of the urban typology of buildings, we're doing a mixed use building for a, a urban development and just outside of Boston. Uh, which is uh, going to be the centerpiece of a new live work community with housing and offices. So it's really proving that mass timber can be used as, a, as our cities grow to, uh, by developers for these uh, new critical pieces of, uh, of building uh, in, in our new urban cities. So uh, we're really excited about kind of both the scale and the, and the wider ranging uh, application of mass timber across program types. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's been interesting to track the maturation of this particular part of the market. And, and the last big report we put out a few years ago, the biggest sort of strain um, on growth of mass timber was the supply side, just not enough 
CLT, MLT, DLT uh, suppliers out there. How does the supply chain look right now, Tom? Are, are there more sort of plans popping up? And um, I, obviously, yeah. we know about lumber prices right now. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> right. And that's, that, How does that's... it look on the supply side when you go to source yeah. a CLT for a project? Are you finding it difficult? Um, no, well, we certainly have a lot more um, options or suppliers to choose from than we did when we designed our first uh, cross-laminated timber building at the uh, UMass Amherst. Uh, at that point, we were looking at just one U.S. supplier. That was back in 2015 when, when it was being bid. And now you've got at least a half dozen, more than, I think you've got around eight, ten uh, U.S. suppliers alone now. So it's really just uh, blossomed. and. Uh, it's and still while kind of the majority of them are in the in the Pacific Northwest, given the uh, kind of the governmental subsidy there and, and, and the excitement in that part, you are seeing it uh, in other parts of the country. Uh, we have I think we have one in the southeast, another one coming up in Arkansas related to the Walmart uh, project uh, where uh, structure land has, Agreed to build a, a factory in Arkansas, mm -hmm. so that's in addition to the Smartland factory that's uh, in Alabama, built in Alabama. So that's two in the South region, and there's many discussions to bring one here in Northeast as well. So I suspect that in within the next three five years, that number is going to double as well in terms of the the amount of uh, cross laminated timber as well as other mass uh, timber uh, uh, suppliers that are uh, in in the United States. Um, of course, so far you've got a lot in more choices in Canada and, and Europe for the suppliers. So we're, we're finding it uh, exactly kind of the way we like it in a sense that more suppliers there are, the more competition there is, prices starts to go down, all of that, which is great as, as the industry starts to mature. mature. Uh, I mean, it's, it's still in its very early stages, uh, you know, compared to where you, know, you could get steel and concrete from so many suppliers, you don't have to worry about that. You still have to worry about it in mass timber to make sure that you know, when you're looking for procurement that it's apples to apples at what you're comparing. I think that's the biggest issue right now is every supplier does things slightly different, even though everybody has to meet the PRG320 uh, specifications of, of cross-laminated timber. Uh, the lamination types, the connections that they would like to use, uh, the species of wood that they use are all very different. So it makes for slightly different uh, uh, products uh, depending on which supplier you go with. And, and, and that's been a little bit tricky. But I think, uh, again, all of that will start to coalesce and become unified as I think the industry matures. Uh, you spoke a little bit about the lumber price. I think that's been the biggest uh, issue with uh, the board feet of lumber price tripling right over the past year. Um, we suspect, uh, and you know, I think wood is not alone there. All commodities and, and materials have gone up. Steel's gone up and concrete has gone up too. But timber, because of its uh, volatility, has, has gone up more. And so uh, we're looking at it and uh, I, I think it will go down, but not to the level that it was before. This is what I'm hearing from all the insiders. Uh, and, and it's just, uh, I think, a natural process of kind of this effects of the pandemic that have like shut down the industries for a while. And so now there's less supply and the demand is picking up. So it'll, it'll take time for, for all of that to kind of like equalize. I don't know, anything new to sort of point out that you, you guys are looking forward to exploring in the next year or two? Well, what I'm seeing is that um, there's a lot more flexibility with mass timber and other materials these mm -hmm. days. And, and I think uh, specifically in areas where mass timber isn't a norm and still like a very new, so outside of like, let's say the Pacific Northwest, most buildings are either steel or concrete still, right? So uh, you still have to uh, deal with issues of contractor know-how, people who know how to build it, all the risks and things that uh, contractors and developers are keen on because naturally they're not, they, risk is something that they don't want to maximize. Right? They want to minimize risk. Uh, whereas I think architects are, are uh, by inherently more risk takers, right? Because you can envision design and, and, and uh, using new materials and new forms. And so what we're, what we're seeing now actually quite a bit is kind of a hybrid approach where like things like cross laminated timber is a significant component of a building structure, but it's not the only component and so we're seeing a lot of structures where you've got a steel frame, 
but you're actually replacing the composite steel deck with concrete with CLT panels because mm -hmm. that's the easiest and, and most cost-effective way to integrate mass timber without changing everything else, right? Mm -hmm. So we're seeing a lot more applications there where right now in terms of uh, cost and minimizing risk, that would be like the easiest way that mass timber can be introduced into a building system. So many, many uh, examples that we're seeing throughout the country. Uh, and, and that's great because I think doing a mass timber doesn't have to be uh, all in. It doesn't have to be like 100% or 0%, right? I think there's a huge, huge range there. Um, at the same time, we're kind of pushing the boundaries of, of the code as well. You know, the design building, although that was that's kind of, uh, that was built and finished in 2017, it, it was remarkable in terms of the inventiveness of that because we actually use cross-laminated timber for uh, the shear walls, for the elevator cores and steel and the stair cores, uh, so that it also took the, the lateral loads. And we had to get a variance to do that. But the effect of, again, doing that and, and if you're able to get the variance, the fact that actually making a core wall out of CLT is so much faster than, let's say, a fully grouted CMU wall, a poured-in-place concrete wall, which takes weeks and months for, for the formwork and the curing of grouting all of those CMU uh, units. All of that takes a lot of time, and a CLT core wall will go up in like a matter of a couple of days, right? Mm -hmm. And so we've actually seen like uh, contractors who've taken this on and uh, actually are just specializing in cores using CLT. So that's, that's like another way. So we're seeing different people use different elements of uh, a mass timber for expediency and where it makes a lot of construction sense. And I think that that uh, proliferation of mass timber along those lines, whether it's the cores, whether it's the floors, start to kind of get a greater use instead of like a, a owner or a client having to invest fully in it. And, and I think that along with the, the whole buildings that are predominantly mass timber, I think all of that will help uh, familiarize and expand mass timber throughout our country. And, and it's certainly starting to do that really exponentially year over year.